Hello Internet Maker Pals, Chris Masto here with a Fusion 360 tutorial. I'd like to show you how to modify an existing 3D model, specifically something that you get in STL format so that you can adapt it better to your needs. The example I have here is this nice screwdriver wall mount published by Bobot on Thingiverse. And you can see here that it holds a set of Weha screwdrivers very nicely mounts to the wall through these screw holes. And uh, it is published Creative Commons, so we are allowed to remix it and modify it. I'm giving credit here to the original author. And as you can see, he's given us an STL file to download. Sometimes people upload the CAD files, the source code files that they originally used when they created their model. In this case, and a lot of cases, you only get the STL. Now, I could bug the author. I could say, hey, could you please give me the file? It might turn out that he made this in OpenSCAD or SketchUp or any number of different programs. I might not have those programs, and I might not know how to use those programs. So while it's always nice to be able to go back to the CAD file so you can modify it, some, in some cases, what you have is the STL, and you just like to do something quick and easy. My situation here is that I printed this off, and it fits my screwdrivers really nicely. But then when I wanted to attach it to the wall, I have this rather large screw-wall-anchor combo thing. that They work really nice, but unfortunately, it doesn't fit in the screw hole that was in this original model. And when I tried to force it in just to see maybe it would cut its way through and, and still work, it split the plastic. So that's not going to work. I need to make the hole larger. Very simple thing, just enlarge the screw hole, print another copy, I should be good to go. So let's look at how to do that in Fusion 360. It's not necessarily obvious if you haven't done it before, so hopefully you'll learn something here, or at least be entertained watching. Here we are in Fusion 360. I have a new blank design, and I'm going to start by bringing in the STL file that we downloaded from Thingiverse. So you do that by selecting Insert, Insert Mesh, and as it says, this inserts the selected mesh file into the active design. So I'm going to select that file from Thingiverse, and you can see it right here. Now we have the opportunity to position, scale, etc. this mesh before we load it in. In this case, I think it would be easier to work with if it were turned on its side. So I'm going to rotate that 90 degrees to start with. And the other thing that may not be obvious from looking at it here, but if we move the camera around a little bit, you can see it's kind of floating in a weird spot. Uh, it's hard to tell really even where it is. Um, a lot of times these things do not load at uh, sort of a sensible zero position. So to fix that issue, first I'm going to click center to put that at our zero zero and then also move to ground because it's still kind of floating. Uh, actually it's now it's halfway embedded in the ground. So I want to click uh, move to ground in order to get that sitting on top of the ground. So now we're in a good spot. And uh, I can click OK here. And now you can see the mesh is loaded. Now this is where it gets a little bit technical, complicated. I'm going to try not to say too much about this, number one, because this video could go on for a long time. And number two, I don't necessarily know what I'm talking about. So the more I say, the more likely I am to say something wrong. What you can see here, hopefully, is that this is a triangle mesh. The original geometry is not available to us. We can't, for example, just select that circle and enlarge it because Fusion doesn't know that that's a circle. And also it doesn't have the tools to work with a mesh file like this. It will import it. And there are some things that you can do there, especially in the newer versions. I don't know exactly how those work and I don't know how to do what I want to do in those workspaces. So I'm going to demonstrate what I see as a fairly simple solution and one that I've used quite often, which is uh, we'll just load the mesh in and then convert it to a BREP file, which we then can actually make modifications to. The first trick in order to do that, if I right click on this, it will give me a bunch of options, but the convert to BREP choice is not one of them. This is one of those things you can only do outside of the timeline if you've used Fusion 360, you know that it has this really awesome timeline that allows you to go back and modify things that you did earlier and it recalculates all the changes and so on. 
There are a few things, however, that don't work within that model, and this is one of them. There are a couple ways you can work around this. You could go over here to this gear menu in the lower right corner, and you could say, do not capture design history, and that would turn off the timeline history. You could also do what I'm going to do here, which is to select create, create base feature. Base feature allows you to do a series of operations that are not captured, they're not saved. So it's almost as if you froze time and then went off outside of history and created a bunch of things. Maybe you create some shapes, drilled holes in them, whatever you did. And then when you sort of resume the flow of time, it's just like this thing pops into existence and you don't have the history of the operations you used to create it. Normally this would probably be a bad idea, but in this case, all we're really doing is a conversion operation here, so it doesn't really matter. Well, so anyway, the practical upshot is if you select create base feature, you get this little icon down here in the history for base feature. I can now right click on this mesh and I have mesh to B-Rep as one of my options. So I will choose that. The uh, dialog pops up here, everything is selected correctly. I wanna create a new body, so I'll click okay. And now you can see that it's created a, a body with faces and sort of the, the objects that we're normally used to working with in Fusion 360. It's a bit strange because normally you wouldn't have this all cut up into little triangles, but for our purposes, that is fine. What I'm doing here is showing kind of a quick and dirty way to get this done. I just want to take this file, I want to enlarge the screw holes, print a new one and be done with it. Now that we've converted the mesh to a body, we can click finish base feature and get back to the timeline. So from now on, the things we do will be captured in history like they normally are. I'm going to open this up here and let's just kind of take a look at the front of this. And essentially at this point, if what I wanted to do was just to make this hole bigger, I could do that. I mean, I literally could go in and select create hole and and just put, you know, put a hole in here and make it a certain size. You know, at this point, I'm kind of eyeballing it. So, you know, this obviously there, there, there's a bunch of stuff that's not right here. Okay. But I want to make the point that you could do that um, and just take the, you know, load in the mesh, convert it to B-Rep and just start adjusting it. For my aesthetics, however, there's a slightly different approach I would like to take to this. What I want to do instead is actually recreate this, but using the profile that we already have to recreate it in a very easy way, and then I can modify it from there. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a sketch, as one often does. So I'll click Create Sketch here, and I want to create a sketch on the on this bottom plane, but I can't quite I can't quite get to it because this is in the way. So um, I'll just hide it temporarily so I can click on the thing I want to click on. Okay, so that's where we want to create our sketch, and then now I'll, I'll show this body again. I'm actually going to change the name to make things easier. We'll call this template because that's kind of the, the template for the thing we want to make. Now, as you can see, uh, I'm in a sketch, and I have access to the geometry from this body, and I can use that in a number of different ways within the sketch. In this case, I want to do the fastest and easiest thing that I can do here, which is to project that template body into the sketch and use that outline that I'm looking at right here as my sketch. So all I have to do is go to Sketch, Project Include, and choose Project, and then I want to make sure over here in my selection filter that I'm not choosing specified entities, I'm choosing bodies. I want, to, I want the whole body. Otherwise, you could just pick and choose parts of this, but I don't want to pick and choose parts of it. I want the whole body selected. So I'm going to click on that and you can see right away, I get all these little purple dots and lines, which is the silhouette of that body projected onto this two dimensional sketch. And if I hide the body itself, you can see that just with one simple operation there, we have the profile of this thing. So I can now click Stop Sketch. And I've got my sketch there and I'm ready to just simply extrude it. So click on Extrude and here it is. And now I can make this uh, into a three-dimensional object. But the question now, if I wanna make it as, basically I wanna copy the original. So 
how big was the original? I, I could get out the calipers and measure it, I suppose, but there's a lot easier way to do it here. We have the model in Fusion 360. So if I unhide that template again, and here's a little bit of a trick. This arrow here is the thing that I'm, you know, adjusting the height of this, right? So if I, if I click on this arrow, and now I can click on the top face of that body, and you can see the, the mouse over here is saying snap to 12. Right, so what is the, the height that I want to extrude this to? Well, it's the height of the original, if I click that, is 12. So just by clicking that now, it's snapped that distance to uh, the top of the, of the template body that we have in there. Of course, now it's looking at it and saying, well, it looks like you want to cut that because it, it's, it's a pretty good guess if you're extruding something through another thing, you want to cut it. But in this case, that's not what we want to do. We actually want to create a new body. Um, you can either go into operation and choose new body, or another way to do that is just to hide the template again. If you hide the template now, it's like, oh, I'm not cutting through anything. I must be creating a new body. You see that operation changes automatically. So there's always like 30 different ways to do anything. Um, and sometimes I, if I remember, I'll try to, I'll try to show you a couple different ways uh, quickly, but we're trying to get through this fast. And so now we have a new body that's not made up of triangles and uh, it matches exactly the template. So I can turn that on, turn this one off, and you can see that's right in there. The only difference right now is that it's missing the screw holes. So let's take care of that situation. Now what I'd like to do for, for this is, is to create a sketch on the front face of this new body here. It doesn't matter which one of these I choose because they're all coplanar, so we'll just pick one. And again, I can turn on this template so that I can see it. In this case, I'm not going to project this geometry. I could do something like that, but I want to, I want to do a slightly different technique this time. Uh, rather than use the uh, existing holes that are already in there, there is the hole on the outside part, and then there's, you know, it's, it's counterboard. So there's a wider hole and then a narrower hole that goes all the way through. But Rather than use those existing circles and so on, I'm just going to use one of them purely for the purpose of getting the center available. If I click look at over here, that will zoom me back to sort of face on looking at this thing. I want to kind of find the center of this circle. The only thing I really care about in this uh, original circle is just where the center is. And I don't want to actually use the circle itself. This might be easier to demonstrate than to talk about. So I'm just going to do it and then maybe it'll make more sense. The first thing is I don't want to draw a real uh, circle on this sketch. I just want to make a mark for reference and you do that by turning on construction. So um, this will allow me to create, um, create an object in the sketch that is not actually usable for anything other than other things can refer to it. And the thing that I want to create is a two-point circle. You can see that this will, will sort of snap to any of these existing intersections with the, with the triangles here. So I'm going to choose a point on one side of the circle and I'm going to choose a matching point on the other side. And by doing that, I'm creating a construction circle because I had construction chosen over here. And the important part is that now I have a center point. I did that on one side and then I'm going to do the same exact thing on the other side. Again, just choose a point and then choose the point exactly across from it and now I've created so I've created two construction circles I can hide the template and you can see again this is sort of an orange dotted line and I can now stop my sketch because that's all I wanted out of this so hopefully now the reason for doing that is a little clearer that just allows me to get a reference to where that screw hole was in the original design on each side and now I have the ability to refer to the center point of that screw hole. And now I can go up to the create menu and I can choose create hole. So we can kind of do the whole thing right from here, no pun intended. If I click on this, and you can do two at once, so I'm going to click on the other side as well and they'll be identical. And now we have a bunch of different options here in the controls for the hole. The first thing we want to do is select the extent of the hole. So right now, you might be able to see that it is going 14 millimeters deep, and then it has kind of a, a taper at the end. Um, if we choose instead 
all for the extent, then that will drill a hole all the way through, which is what we want, really not, it's not a partial hole. So that solves that part. And then the next part is the diameter of the hole. In this case, now this is one place where I got out the calipers, I measured that special screw that I want to use, and I determined that it is 6.3 millimeters. So I'm going to set the diameter here to 6.3, and that will give me the correct hole that that screw is going to go through without cracking the plastic. And then there's one more thing we want to do, because rather than a simple hole, we would like to do a counter bore to make some room for the screw head. Now the counter bore has its own diameter and its own depth. If you remember to that sketch we did just a minute ago, the diameter of the original counter bore was 8.5. That was that circle that we used for reference, and it came up as 8.5. That fit perfectly fine, my screw head. So I'm just going to go with that. Uh, counterboard diameter 8.5 would be perfectly usable, and I'm going to keep that. And now the next question is, how deep do we want the counterboard to be? As you can see, we can adjust it to any depth available. And this is another place where I'd like to just reference the original design that the counterbore hole in here. It's getting a little bit busy. Maybe I'll hide this body and we can take a quick look. You can see that there is that, uh, maybe you can't see it. Zoom in. In here, there is a, there it is. So there's a counter bore here and whatever that depth was, was actually pretty reasonable for, for my purposes. And this is another place where you can, you can just kind of click on it. So there, this here, I just want to adjust my view to be a little bit less crazy. Um, All right, so this here is the control that we use to adjust the depth of the counterbore. Um, and if I click on this to select that, now it will allow me to click on a face here from the original template body to snap to that depth. So as you can see, snap to 3.5 is what comes up here. If I click on that, that'll snap the depth of the new counterbore to the depth of the original counterbore which is 3.5 millimeters, and there, you know, we know that worked. I know that the screw had fit in there, so I'm going to just use that rather than come up with my own number. So now, if I hide the template again and re-show this body, that's the screw hole that we're fixing to make, um, and it actually looks like that's exactly what I want, um, and because I selected both of them on both sides, we've got the whole thing ready to go. Just have to click OK. And now that screw hole is cut. And that's it, we're done. This modified screwdriver holder is ready to print in your 3D printing software of choice. So next time you run into something where you have a model and you're like, oh, that's, that's almost what I want, it just needs a little tweak, um, realize that you, there are tools that you can use in Fusion 360 to load an STL file and uh, tweak it and uh, make a slightly modified version that's better for your needs. Now, this, of course, uh, we just clicked on things visually and aligned them to existing things. So this is not parametric. I can't uh, very easily modify the size of, of the uh, screwdriver holes, for example. Even these things, um, I certainly can go back here and I can right click uh, in the history edit feature and I could change this. You know, if I decided that the, this hole was too big or something and I needed it to be 5.3, um, so some of these parts uh, are easily editable and others not so much. Um, but again, if all you're looking to do is take something that already exists um, and make a few little modifications to it, this is uh, an easy way to do that. Now, really quick note, you may have seen the controversy recently on YouTube changing their rules on who gets to be in the YouTube partner program. The practical upshot is you need a minimum of a thousand subscribers. I don't have a thousand subscribers yet. So if you like this, if you want to encourage me to do more, um, if you want to help me out a little bit and find out when new videos come out, which is the benefit to you, then please do subscribe to my channel. I would love to hit that magic 1000 mark. Thanks a lot for watching. And for now, that's all I got.